Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome back to the final episode of our Guilds of Ravnica pre-release guide series. We've already talked about Boros, Golgari, Is it and Selesnya. So if you're going to play any of those guilds at your upcoming pre-release, click the links on the screen or the first link in the description for everything you need to know to kick butt. In this episode, we're talking about House Dimir. I know, they don't exist. Ha ha, but we have work to do, dang it. So sit back, relax, and get ready for the most subtle yet savage ride of your life. Oh, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to, uh, you know, hit that like button. It's right down there. It helps out a lot. It looks like this. House Dimir is secrecy incarnate. The entire guild functions in the shadows of Ravnica, valuing information above anything else. They always have the upper hand because they always know more than anyone else. If knowledge is power, House Dimir is the most powerful guild by far, not even close. To that end, if you're choosing to play House Dimir at your guilds of Ravnica pre-release, you are choosing to play the Control Guild. The guild that wants to know what's going on at all times. The guild that wants the most information about everything everything ever. If you are a control player or even a slow mid-range player, Dimir might be the choice for you. This deck does not win fast because it doesn't want to win fast. It wants to play slowly, learn everything humanly possible, then destroy its enemies with its superior intellect. I know, it's exciting. House Dimir's mechanic in Guilds of Ravnica is Surveil. Surveil lets you look at the top X cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order. Truly a blue mechanic. Now, here's the thing. Unlike Mentor, Undergrowth, Jumpstart, and Convoke, Surveil doesn't actively win you the game. It doesn't necessarily apply pressure by itself. What it does is gain you information. It enables you to have whatever you want to put yourself into a position to win the game. But Surveil itself cannot win the game. So if you're the type of player who values information and setting up the right plays, this is where you want to be. Surveil answers questions. It fixes the top of your deck. It gives you control over your own destiny in a lot of ways. A ton of responsibility and a high skill curve, yes, but also very powerful. Never underestimate the value in being able to draw whatever you want. To really get into this guild, let's look at the rares and mythics we're working with. Lazav the Multifarious is the first promo card you could receive. Comes down as a 1-3 for 2 that surveils 1, but his real value is that activated ability letting him copy anything in your graveyard, which directly synergizes with Surveil. Leave it to the Guildmaster to be compatible directly with Surveil. Nice, great promo if you can get it. It Trot of the Silencer might as well read as a removal spell. 4 mana deal 3 damage to target player, exile target creature. She is a bomb removal spell. And you get to shuffle her back into your library to use again. And you have Surveil so you can get to her faster. Great promo, real scary card. Then we have Connive and Concoct. Connive is a 2 CMC control magic. Great against guild mages. And Concoct is a reanimation spell right after Surveilling 3 so you can set yourself up for it. Another nice rare for Surveil. This will make a fine promo card. Demonic Betrayal is an interesting card, but only really useful in the super late game, or if your opponent is also on a graveyard-based deck. And even if both of those things are true, you still need enough mana to cast whatever it is you want to copy after casting the Betrayal. I'm not saying it's bad because it definitely isn't, but just make sure you understand, you still need mana to cast everything you want to play. If you do that, bomb endgame card for sure. Doom Whisper is a super bomb, one of the best bombs in the entire set. This card is stupid. Even if it is removed, you can surveil a bunch of times before it dies. And if it isn't removed, that's a 6-6 flyer with trample for 5. This card is broken, wowza. And speaking of broken, Dream Eater is Insanity Incarnate. Six mana for a 4-3 with flash and flying is going to dumpster something. And it surveils four. That's a huge surveil and it unsummons, potentially time walking your opponent. Another super bomb rare. Blood Operative is really interesting. It's the poster child for surveil. Three power with lifelink for three is pretty nice. Plus, whenever you lifelink with it, you get enough life to then bring it back to your hand for a net zero as long as you're surveilling. You can end up casting the operative like 10 times in a game. Gain life, pay life, three power. This is going to kill 
So much solid promo. Now, we were able to confirm that Narc Amoeba is a potential Demir promo card. If it is, then it directly synergizes with Surveil, letting you put it onto the battlefield for free when that trigger goes off. It isn't going to be amazing here like it is in constructed formats, but it's a playable free card. Thief of Sanity is another potential promo. With a trigger like that, you can take over a game. Cast whatever you take from them. Thief of Sanity is insane, and with flying, it's so good. All in all, I think Dimir is looking really nice as far as potential promos are concerned. Definitely one of the stronger guilds. You can open up that seated pack and get Lazav, Etrada, Connive, and Concoct. Doom Whisper, Dream Eater, Thief of Sanity, and Blood Operative, and be pretty happy about it. Not a lot of misses in this guild. So if missing with your promo is something you're legit worried about, Dimir might be a solid choice for you. There is some consistency here. Now let's talk non-rare Dimir playables. Your deck is about control and tempo. House Guild Mage is perfect. Taps down important creatures and surveils. This is Dimir in a nutshell. As a matter of fact, Dimir brought a ton of Surveil to the party. City Watch Sphinx Surveils on Death, Night Veil Sprite Surveils on Attack, Price of Fame Kills and Surveils, Sabotage Surveils, Thoughtful Erasure, Barrier of Bones, Dazzling Lights, Deadly Visit, Dimir Informant, Mephitic Vapors, Notion Rain, Unexplained Disappearance, Watcher in the Mist, and Whisper Agent. Look at all of these cards. All of these Surveil. That's insane. That's so much surveillance, truly a ridiculous amount. And then you have direct synergy with surveil, like Whispering Snitch that smacks opponents each turn, Dark Blade Agent who gets Death Touch and a great trigger, Thoughtbound Phantasm that just gets straight up huge, so broken, Demir Spybug that will probably win you games, two mana for a 1 1 flyer that gets big just for surveilling, that's ridiculous, and finally, Disinformation Campaign, Constant Card Draw and discard. Do you see all of this? Surveil is easily the most supported mechanic we've looked at in this set, by far not even close. House Dimir is the most supportive guild for its mechanic. It's honestly astonishing how supportive it is. 28 out of the 34 Dimir cards either surveil or synergize with surveil. This means that you will constantly have access to whatever you want on the top of your library. This guild is crazy. Do we even need neutral cards? I mean, we're gonna look, but wow. Capture Sphere is perfect removal for this type of deck. Devious Cover-Up is a counter that gets you four relevant cards back into your deck. That's real nice. Selective Snare is the kind of tempo card we're going after. Sets your opponent back a bit. Then Wall of Mist and Wish Coin Crab help stem early bleeding while you get set up. In Black, Creeping Chill synergizes directly with Surveil, basically giving you a free Lightning Helix to a player. That's very nice. Play Crafter, a solid removal, can't ignore that. And Veiled Shade could be of late game value for us and provide a nice creature curve fill-in spot early. The reason there weren't too many neutral cards for us in blue or black is because we really don't need them. Many of the blue and black cards you're getting from your packs will end up being Demir, and thanks to the crazy ratio of good to bad Demir cards, you'll be able to play the vast majority of them. Going pure blue-black is going to be real easy for a Dimir player, but that doesn't mean there isn't room to grow. Surveil is an incredibly powerful mechanic that fixes the top of your deck and fills your graveyard. This set was designed with that in mind. There are two directions you can take Dimir that will make it even more powerful. Let's go cover them now. The first is Splashing Green for the Golgari. Undergrowth and Surveil might as well be peanut butter and jelly, except the peanut butter is rotten and the jelly is also rotten. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, the combo is pretty insane. You're dumping cards into your yard with Surveil constantly, which directly fuels Undergrowth and Undergrowth is a mechanic that can actually win the game. Surveil is great for setting things up, but having the extra power of something like Undergrowth is huge. If you look in black, Lot with the Giant gets huge and Necrotic Wound sees increased value. 
Then if you splash green, wow, talk about wind conditions. In addition to neutral powerhouses like Affectionate Indrik and Arboretum Elemental, Golgari Raiders is strong, Crawl Harpooner is really strong, Vigor Spore Worm is the bee's knees. Then we see cards like Molderhawk and Rhizome Lurcher that can actually win games. That's what we need, game winners. With the addition of Golgari to make this deck Sultai, it becomes a true mid-range deck with a disturbing amount of card draw and card filtering that results in powerful creatures on the battlefield and tempo spells in the hand. This is as balanced of a deck as you're going to find. If you like true mid-range in terms of creatures and spells, this is exact middle of the road. The other splash for the Demir and my personal favorite is Is It. Bringing Jumpstart and Surveil together is just, it feels right, it is, it's perfect. You Surveil a bunch, ditch cards to your yard, then Jumpstart them by discarding other Jumpstart spells or cards you don't need. That is so much extra value. Unexplained Disappearance in the same deck as Chemister's Insight in the same deck as Thoughtbound Phantasm. Mm, it is hard not to be excited. This doesn't even feel like a splash to me. It feels like it's part of the normal strategy. That's why the insight fits so well. It's why Murmuring Mystic will win games for you. Radical Idea ends up being so much card advantage. Then you can go into red for even more jumpstart and removal. Book Devourer, Holy Butts, Direct Current, Gravitic Punch, Electrostatic Field, Command the Storm, Inescapable Blaze, Lava Coil, and then, my goodness, and then Beacon Bolt, Crackling Drake, Hypothesis, or Sonic Assault. I know I just threw a lot of cards at you, but come on! You have to admit that Grixis is looking kind of nuts. This is a control deck that burns everything to the ground. If you decide to go Dimir in this pre-release and splashing green isn't something you want to do or it isn't supported enough, look at red. This is a spell-based deck that can go places. It can beat up anything. Between Surveil and Jumpstart, you'll have access to the best of everything you have. If you play this, please let me know how it goes because it is just beyond fun as heck. Whether you splash green, red, or don't splash anything at all, House Dimir is the control guild in this set. If you choose to play Dimir at the pre-release, you will not have the fastest deck in the room ever. You will be much closer to the slowest deck. This guild is for control players and methodical players. If you enjoy drawing cards, fixing the top of your library, and just owning every situation you're in, this is the guild for you. Take control, play Dimir. And that's going to do it for the last episode in our Guilds of Ravnica pre-release guide series. What do you think about House Dimir? Is this control style something you're looking forward to playing? If not, what are you going to play? I need to know, so please let me know what you're thinking, and we'll talk about it. And I do hope you enjoy this pre-release series, and good luck this weekend. Let me know how you do. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGplayer.com. Guilds of Ravnica release is basically a week away at this point, and you can still pre-order boxes right now for $91 each by just clicking the link on the screen and helping the channel. If you do not have a local game store or yours is charging way too much, just help a guy out. I enjoy being able to live. Yeah, woo, enjoy.